Hello. Hello in there. Welcome back, guys. They're back. They're back. Can you see them? They're back. <laughs> Welcome back to Refresh Furniture. My name is Jacinta Grace, and this is Brain. So today, this video is to help newbies. Um, there's a lot of new furniture flippers out there who are just starting, and we're going to just show the steps. It's like a dance. Today we're going to be using the Purico products that was gifted to my daughter last year. Those of you who have been around for a long time and watched Rebecca's show when this was for Aussie Furniture Flippers, um, you will know that Purico gifted Rebecca a whole heap of products. Um, I will put a photo up. This is so exciting. Um, so we've got top coats, we've got lots of different coloured chalk paints, um, stains, um, sealers, so a huge thank you to Carico. Now, Rebecca was very quickly snapped up then past some millies. Rebecca's busy doing the teenage thing, so I'm really excited I got to use it. Guys, I'm not a content creator, okay, which means I don't get any benefits showing you guys the products or telling you my opinions. Furniture flipping in Australia is just going crazy. It is like the latest fad, and there's lots of new people going, I'm ready to furniture flip. What do I need? How do I do it? So basically, to answer those questions, these are the key things that you need. Um, a sander, I just bought it from Bunnings. Orbital sander, I think it's pretty good. And it comes with a couple of sanding discs for you to use. So you'll need your sanding disc. 120 is a good start for your furniture to sand with. And then you use the 240 to give that a really nice smooth finish. You will need a paintbrush. I use my slick paint brushes. I've got a whole range of sizes. Um, they're a bit expensive, but um, honestly, you need to invest in a good paintbrush. Otherwise, you're going to have those really ugly streak marks. Uni Pro is another really good paintbrush you can get pick up from Bunnings that I like. To help minimize paint lines, this is a mister. Absolute game changer. It really helps. So, what you do if the paint's drying out, you spray, can you see that? And it's just a fine mist of water and that'll help smooth your paint out or recharge if it's drying out too quickly. When I'm using top coats or my stains, I like to use one of these guys. This is a sponge. Now, a lot of the products that you use for furniture painting are water-based. So guys, this is an investment. Oh, and of course, a microfiber cloth. There is so many uses that I use these for and again, you can pop them in the washing machine and wash them. So another investment. So in this video, little Frank decides that he's going to give painting a go, don't you Frank? Yeah, it's pretty good, but I had to fire you because he weren't big enough. <laughs> I just pulled these bedside tables out of the naughty corner. They've already been sanded with a 40 and then up to an 80 grit sandpaper. I'd already washed with cuts and lace clean cut and then with fresh water. Um, my orbital sander at the time was dying, so I, I kind of left it in the shed for a few months and now I've just pulled it out. So I'm starting here today, I've given another quick wash. Um, I'm, so I'm sanding back with a 120 grit sandpaper. Now that's done, I'm going to wipe it down with a damp microfiber cloth. And for the rest of the body, a 240 grit sandpaper, so just using a really fine sandpaper just to get rid of all those nuts nicks and bumps. Today I'm going to use the second undercoat uh, is Perico. Um, you always should stir their paint rather than shake it. I collect icy pole sticks from the kids icy poles. You just wash them and I find it's the best little thing just to stir up these paints. How lovely and thick that is. And I like to use a glass bowl. But I could use it inside, it's water based. Um, it does stop your tannin bleed. Do I need it, Frank? A sleek brush. And it's the 63 millimeter. And my supervisor's here.
I am going to sand along here just to get rid of any bumps that might be in. So just sanding gently. Okay, and any build up of paint. You run your hand over it, make sure it feels nice and smooth. And voila, we do not have to have the big fancy sanders. I am saving up for one, but that will come in turn. And once you've sanded, uh, you go, go over your piece with a microfiber cloth just to get rid of all that dust. You don't want it in your paint. So today's a bit of a Purico day. I am using this gorgeous color here called Seashell. I'm going to use a chalk finish paint. I can paint this inside if I want to, but I actually like painting outside. So with this one here, we've cleaned, check, we've created a tooth, check. We have to stir the paint, not shake it. This will have two coats and we're going to allow 15 minutes to two hours in between dry time. The ideal temperature to paint with this product is 25 degrees. You can either do a crisscross like you do with the Annie Sloan paint for texture or you can use a smooth feature, it's up to you. We will be sealing this with one of the Purico's top coats. Because it is a clay base product, it has to be sealed. Being a neutral color, I'm hoping for a really quick sale. So as you can see with the white, it's just very subtle, but it's beautiful. All right, don't forget we need two coats with this. So if you're kind of not sure about the color at the moment, usually it'll be a bit streaky at first, but um, once we get that second coat on, I love the second coat actually, it's my favorite part of the, the project because that's where you really see the true color that you're painting with. Your paint is really actually quite a pleasure to work with. So time for the second coat of the Purico. So this is 200 mils and I've used, I don't know if you can see it, I've probably used half, which is not bad. When you do your second coat, um, I generally find that I don't need as much on that second coat. So remember Purico, we need to stir and it's a really beautiful creamy texture. I've been pleasantly surprised. I've used other I've used Purico mineral paints before, but I'm in love with this. This is so nice. All right, let's go the second coat. And hopefully Frank won't try and eat it. <laughs> I'm going to miss my brush with my mister. Guys, if you haven't got a mister, grab one. Absolutely brilliant. So I just coat, I just dab it in. I work a little bit. <laughs> How do you reckon? Okay, so I'm gonna paint, Frank. Excuse me. This is me, not you. I'm Frank here. Is it your turn? <laughs> I really cut paint like <laughs> So here I am teaching Frank how to paint. And uh, you just done it a bit heavy, mate. Yeah, I'm going to do another one. I'll do another drill. Oh, man. I kind of feel like I've got a kid, like a little baby or something, and it's distracting me. All right, you're not helping now. All right, okay, now we have painted the body. It's time to move on to what we're gonna do here. First of all, as you can see all this mark paint here that's overlapped, 
I'm going to use 240. So this will give me my final sand for the top of this piece and also take off that excess paint. Okay, now we've sanded that, just grab a microfiber cloth and we are gonna make sure that dust is off. Now what I've just done, I'm doing a, a white wash, okay? I have used a seashell. I put in 20 mil, then I added 30 mil of water and I've mixed this in. Okay, so the reason you do white washes is to allow this grain to peep through. So as you can see, when the wood here is wet, it's got a real orange coming through and this, this is why I'm not going to go raw. I want to turn that down. So to turn that down, okay, what we're doing is we're going to put this paint on. So I've made it nice and thin. The chalk paint dries pretty quickly. Okay, so I'm very quickly letting it all soak in. And then with when you whitewash, you pretty much rub it off straight away. If you want a lot of the whitewash taken away, then you put on different pressure. I'm actually quite happy at this level here. I'm doing it much lighter than I press there. So this is about the color that I want. So what I'll do with the other side, I'll pop some more of that white wash on. So you just fiddle until you get the look that you're after. So there's a roll to the white wash. This is subtle but I think it looks gorgeous. Okay, I've got a little bit of a confession to make. When I was doing this piece, I ran out of the Purico eggshell sealer. So I did the second coat using Kart Simile's Boutique Top Coat Satin Finish. All right. Um, now this Purico satin finish, it's got 200 mils in it. She used this product for a little dresser that she did. She also used the sealer for a chair. I used it and I did two coats, dining room, eight seater. And today I got one coat done for these two bedside tables. So for 200 mils, guys, that's not bad. That is, three and a half different projects. And I'm pretty sure I used this sealer for other projects. Um, quite enjoy using it. Um, I also quite enjoy using the Carts and Millie. I thought I would fess up a little bit though. I've done the whitewash and I'm just showing you some pictures here of lots of different handles and looks and this much as, and I even put it in the garage again for another two weeks. And it just looked too bland for me. I've decided to come back and to stain the top of the wood just to bring a bit of color out. I'm going to give this a sand back for 240 because this feels as smooth as silk. So I need to give it some more teeth again. And then I'm gonna put Purico's um, staining glaze. This is leather. Now a lot of, <laughs> I'm really sorry because I'm kind of teasing a lot of people here. This was my favorite stain, but that Purico no longer sells it. This is gold, but you can't buy this anymore. So again, with your Purico product, you need to stir it up. It's so easy to do. I pour the Purico into a glass jar. You don't need much. So I have a ton of these. This is a clean damp cloth. Now with Purico to put it on, this is a damp sponge. Um, Purico actually sell their own and it is a green version, which is good because I don't know if you can see it. This blue flakes off and I find it a bit annoying. All right, so you're just simply dipping in and you do nice straight lines. And as the instructions said, you make sure they're nice and thin rather than thick. This is one coat of the Purico's leather. So I really love how the white kind of peeks through. 
Then you've got the leather, which I still really enjoy the stain, but I actually wanted a little bit darker. And the Carts and Millies washed away how now? Give it another layer again to make it that much darker. Carts and Millies, you shake, and we'll be applying it on the same way. So again, I'm using my sponge. I'm gonna work from left to right. Oops, I might need some more. And I just want a thin one because what I wanna do, I just wanna give it that little bit more of the darker shade in it. I've actually had a friend who is interested in buying these already. Now she's hoping, she was wanting the darker color and she wants to see how it goes with a slightly darker color. And then, um, if she doesn't like it with a darker color, she wants me just to paint the top. So I put this on, I'm letting it settle for a second. Now we don't want to wait too long. And now I'm going to simply use a mic damp microfiber cloth again and I'm going to wipe off this excess, just very gently. Okay, just the excess. I'm gonna give it a few minutes to settle. Oh. And I'm just gonna brush off that excess. I'm gonna kind of massage it in a little. Now it does dry quickly, so you want to be careful you don't get those lines. Okay. And that just gives another layer on top, which browns it up and gives it that little bit of shade of darkening. Yeah. So my friend who wants to buy this, she wants this lip here brown. So what I'm going to do is... I'm just going to have a little experiment. If it doesn't work out, I'm just going to repaint it. So I'm just using the how now over the top of the seashell. And if I layer that, go back and use the leather, Purico leather with that, what do you reckon? I might get away with having that appear like it is through the stained wood. So we'll see how that works out. So I'm just putting this over the top. Go. Got to try and match that colour in. And we'll see what happens. So she might get her darker top yet. So again, I'm going to let that sit and soak into the paint. So I've had, give them a chance to dry. Um, I've washed this out a little bit and now I'm going to use the Purico leather just to make sure it's got those different shades of colour. So I've showed you how to use a whitewash method, which is awesome. And now I'm going to show you how to do a staggered stain look. Now I didn't show you everything completely because again, it's the first time I've did it and I wasn't really confident in my steps. Okay, so at the end here, we've got some photos of just a mixture of photos of that final stain, how they look fantastic. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can do these bedside tables. Which did you like better? Please let me know in the comments section. Did you like the white white wash or did you like it with the stain? And voila, we have a couple of lovely bedside tables. Like it is just absolutely awesome. It just looks beautiful. And again, thank you Purico for sending Rebecca those products so long ago yeah. guys I hope you enjoyed the show we're done please like and subscribe and that way I can justify the hobby why I can continue making these videos have a great weekend and I'll see you next week bye come on Frank let's go